the man himself, Matt Ward. Matt, how's it going? I'm oh, good, thanks. I feel like Dan Dawson. I saw your interview and I feel like Dan yeah. Dawson. First of all, thanks for having us at yeah. Live Darts here for the evening. No, it's a pleasure. Thanks for coming and doing all these interviews. As I say, it must be manic for you having to do this tonight and then you've got players in the Euro Tour, players on the Challenge Tour, probably playing as we speak right now. Yeah, Jamie Hughes won. Or you, any other. You must be absolutely non-stop today. Oh yeah, the phone was a bit mad, but you know it's all part of the job. Hopefully Dow can get the job done later and Jamie's still going strong on the second one, so it's all good news at the minute, yeah. Nights like this must be... An absolute nightmare for yourself, organisation-wise, logistical-wise, getting everyone here, getting everything done for the evening. Uh, yeah, it's difficult. Um, we've got a good team there. Obviously, we've teamed up with Jason at Modus, and he's got a good team, and a few people help out. So we've got about nine, ten people working the event tonight. So it's it's difficult with a thousand people here, but obviously um, looking forward to it. It's a great venue, like you say, and obviously just out the season in Skegness as well. So hi everyone, we're here at the MDA Promotions event, and we're joined by host tonight, Willie Thorne. Willie, thanks for joining us. Absolute pleasure. It's my third time here in a, in a very few months. We've uh, been here with Gaza, been here with Anthony Joshua, and now I've got the Legends of Darts, which is going to be great fun. Bit of a drive down for yourself, Dundee last night. Yes, I was at Dundee last night with Gaza, and uh, I, I got to Carlisle, decided to have a stop there, and then got back in the car again this morning and drove down to Skegness. Right, only one place to start in the snooker. The hot topic at the moment is the shot clock. What's your thoughts on it, and do you think that slow players deserve to be fined for the good of the game, or are you completely against it? I'm definitely an advocate of the shot clock. To be perfectly honest, I think now it needs to be brought in. In fairness, most snooker players, the first shot they see is the shot they need to play. So then all of a sudden they spend the next few minutes messing around. I mean, don't get me wrong, Peter Ebden has always been like that. So it's, I'm, I'm not just picking Peter out because he's been former champion of the world, one of the greatest players of all time. But I think in fairness, it's getting... The, we're in the entertainment business. I think that's what the term Barry Earn used, and that's what we're in the entertainment business. And I think you've got to entertain the fans. So, so taking 35, 40 seconds a shot, I think most players should be on 20 seconds. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Live Darts TV. We're joined by the legend that is Phil Taylor. Phil, thanks for joining us. We're here back in Skegness. Pleased to be back in like the holiday environment. I used to come holiday here when I was a little child with my mum and dad in Bucklings next door. Obviously, I love it, love Skegness. Obviously fresh off the back, made your punditry debut at the match play. Did you enjoy it? Being that side of the microphone and seeing it through a it different was way? Di yeah, it was different. It was different for me and I did enjoy it, yeah. I mean, everybody thought we and Wayne were going to fall out, but we didn't. We, we quite gelled, I think. It was good, yeah. Rod Studd looked after me very well. You know, and show me a few of the ropes, like you know what to do and what not to do. So, from a player's point of view, it was interesting to see the other side of it, how that all works. Yeah, yeah. I am a bit of a different one to them. They are the ones what do all the loudness. I was, I was just commentating on what I saw, really. At the end of the day, must have been pleased with the social media reaction you got as well from it, because it seemed to go down very well with the darts fans. Well, thank you, thank you. I, I, I don't know. I don't want it. Bob does it for me. Obviously, as well. But I tell him what we're on. <laughs> Obviously, Gary winning has joined a very exclusive club. Only yourself, Gary, and Michael that have won the Darts Triple Crown. Yeah, the treble. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did well, Gary did. Especially, you know, after coming back from abroad, you know, he wasn't wasn't the fittest he's ever been. You know, with, with jet lag. But I think he did brilliant. For a stage that he doesn't hasn't done well on before either, so that must be pleasing. For no, him. the first time I'm not in it, and he goes and wins it. Can't believe it. We're here in Skegness for the MDA and Modus promotion. Unbelievable event, and we're joined by Sky Sports Export Wayne Mardle. Wayne, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Phil. I say, great event. It's been down a lovely arena to play darts in. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looks a million dollars. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll play a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I say we haven't spoken since the match play. Gary's joined a very, very unique club. Only Phil, Michael, and himself to win the Triple Crown. Unbelievable achievement, and one of the modern greats of the game. Uh, very much so. I, I, I believe that in recent years, Gary's been, I'm not going to say forgotten, but you, you mentioned the three-time world champions, which people do, and I'm on about you, you John Parts, you, you John Lowe's, uh, obviously Brissy being five times and, and everything else, and uh, Barney. I don't think Gary gets the credit for what he's won. I think he's still underachieved. Because I think he's, he's got the ability that not many people have, have ever had in the game. And this is going to be contentious, but I couldn't care less because that's what I do. I think that apart from Michael Van Gerwen, apart from Phil Taylor, Gary Anderson is the best player that I've seen apart from those two. So I'm making the third best player that I've ever seen. Uh, that's including Eric. That's including Barney, John Lowe. That's including these people. Uh, the way that he won that final against Mentor Sulevich, digging deep, 
do people think that Gary can grind it out? Before that, maybe not. He ground that out. That was tough work. And I tell you what, I, I'm a Gary. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Gary Anderson fan. I, I like the way he plays the game. Get on with it. Get on with it. Play quicker than me if you can, and then I'll be happy. Right now, is he the best player in the world? Forget the rankings. On current form, is he the best player in the world, in your opinion, right now? No. No, Michael Van Gogh is always the best player in the world until he packs up or until he goes right off the boil. He's not off the boil. I, I think that Gary's still second behind Michael, and that's how good Michael Van Gogh is. Bobby, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. First of all, after your health scout in the year, back to normal now on the mend? Yeah, well, I, I had pneumonia. I didn't. When you get pneumonia, you don't even know you've got it. That's the frightening thing about it. I just had a bad cough, a bit chesty. Didn't think of it. I just thought it was another cold. Got out of bed, have a wee, and collapsed in the hospital. You know, you can we can die of it, but you don't know you got it. You've got to be very careful. When you get older, it's obviously more dangerous than if you're young. You probably get over it easier. But I had four days in hospital and I'm all right now, yeah. Amazing, obviously only one place to start, the BDO, there's all changed at the top and they've got rid of all the sanctions against their players now. Is this a great thing for darts and the first step of maybe the two organisations working together? Well, I think it was a bit silly in the beginning, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't join the PDC, the reason why, because no one asked me. You wouldn't think that, would you? No one ever asked me. And I wasn't into tournaments when that when they went. I came back in '92, and won the playoffs, and then that's when they split. But I wasn't involved in all that aggravation. And then he got nasty. You know, his PDC player, his BDO player, ninety percent come from the BDO, the World Federation of Darts. So it's rubbish. They're the same people, and I think it's stupid. To be honest with you. But I'm glad they've sort of like it's like having a divorce. You don't take your ex-missus out to have a meal, do you? Because the wife you just married gets yump, and it's the same thing. So, but now they've sort of like come to their senses on it, which is good. Do you think we'll ever see it one day where darts is all under one banner again? I, not in my lifetime, I don't think. And we're joined by the man himself, Colin Lloyd. Colin, how's it going? No, very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well. I haven't good. seen you since the match play, so only place to start. What an unbelievable event, Gary joining the Triple Crown. Yeah, great achievement for him. Oh, yeah. listen, he he played absolutely magic, and um, let's not forget mental, you know, because it takes two people to make a final. And uh, Jesus, what a final! It was absolutely brilliant. I mean, the tournament started off quite slow, really. You know, everybody was wondering when there's going to be a hundred average, and then all of a sudden it just exploded into life, and it was just it was sensational. It was brilliant, and you know, fair play to Gary Anson. Going up there, getting the job done and uh, proving what a great champion he is. I say you're now spotting for Sky Sports yeah. as well. Yeah. You enjoying it? Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, it's uh, it's great fun. You know, the, the, the Sky crew, they're um, they're absolutely fantastic. You know, there's, you know, you, you've got to be serious. You've got to do your job properly and whatever, you know. But it's always great job, everyone. You know, thanks very much for everyone's help. It's, it's been great, you know. And um, I'm, I'm loving it. Keith, Keith Dell has been great. You know, Keith's got me involved in it, and like I say, it's just, it's just great to be involved. It's just great to be around with the big darts competitions again, so long may it continue. Have you got your little black book? Will you play it the way they go and things no, like I'm that? No, I'm be... leaving that to Keith at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, because you, you must have to do some homework for some players, because yeah. they all go weird and wonderful yeah, ways Yeah, of now. course you do. But do you know what? Seriously, the thing about it is, is when you're in the heat and the throws of darts, um, there was one game I've done, it was last year's Grand Slam, and it was Gary Anderson. Now I know Gary Anderson for 108 goes triple 17, single 17 tops. And uh, I sat there with Mike Fro, triple 17, single 17 tops, single 17, triple 17 tops, you know. Bang, bang, bang. And he went, oh, lovely, jubbly. About three legs later, triple 17, single 17 tops, single 17, triple 17 tops. I said, we all know, don't we? All of a sudden there's a boom. And I thought, I'm looking at the 17s, cameras on the 17s. And I sort of, I quickly glanced across and looked at my full screen. I went, I went like, single eight tops, single eight tops, you know. So there's sometimes with a, with a player, you know, it's your head, it's your mindset. Yeah. You know, although Gary goes that way, sometimes when you're in the throes of a match. It just feels right to go you just, way. Yeah, you just go and you just do it. You just throw darts. And um, it didn't go the wrong way. He just went the way he felt comfortable at that moment in time. So... 
you do have to be on the ball a little bit, otherwise you get caught out massively, yeah. Gonna take you all the way back. How mm. did you get into darts? What uh, was your way into the? Lucky, I was. I was always a fan. I used to queue up outside the Winter Gardens at uh, Blackpool on New Year's Day for a season ticket. It's eighty quid then, and um, you know I always did that queued up, and then I loved the darts. And I lost my job. I was a plumber. I lost my job, and um, I went to a Premier League night, Sheffield, um, and I got. A card there saying Adrian Lewis on tour, Paul Booth, Paul Booth's an MC in the darts world. Yeah. So I called him up, got a venue sorted, and he says, oh, Barnevelt's available as well, this is after he'd won his world championship. Oh, let's get it. No, I didn't have internet then, didn't have any emails, never did anything like that. Stranger here looking back how ridiculous it was, it was all hand tickets and stuff, and word of mouth and phone, we had 300 people in the, the first of my local uh, club, Ibstock, that was 2007, and ever since then it's like, got into managing players and it sort of built and built and built and now it's my full-time job so it was you know <laughs> how was the weird. transition from just putting on exhibitions to being it's not just a manager you're almost an agent for them as well aren't you uh, it's hard really because you've got a promoter's hat and you've got an agent's hat as well and um, so sometimes you'll people will ring up and obviously you set a price for a player and it's difficult but, but it's sometimes easy because you know exactly what that player is worth so you know if that that's a, a good price for a player and stuff but to promote an event is is a lot less stressful than managing players. Obviously, you're managing a lot of egos and managing a lot of tantrums, and they're not the best when they lose. As nobody is, you know, and you've got youth players as well. And man management is is a thing. Obviously, I've got Daryl um, and Benito. That's the two that I try and manage. Benito is very doesn't do it. Uh, Benito does a lot for himself, whereas Daryl I do everything, which doesn't mean him less of a player. But he likes everything to be done for him. Just needs to know where he's got. Doesn't to be. know. Yeah, where am I going? And same with James as well. James Wilson, other players. Um, uh, John Goldie, who's a tour card holder, he'll he'll like to have a little input as well, and the youth players as well. You got Nathan, who needs everything done for him. And that's happy. He just wants to play darts, and that's what you take the pressure off the players. Obviously, um, the financial strain as well when you're starting out. A lot of players can't do the tour, even though the entries have gone to fly over from Ireland in a hotel, like Kevin Maness, for, for him to come out for about four hundred pound a weekend. So you take away the financial strain. Um, so that, that's the thing that I I think my early doors is the plays you take off the financial strain as they progress you take off all the pressure like twitter i do all the twitters and stuff and you know the players won't be able to cope with the tweets obviously as well the calendar was released yesterday have you had a quick look at the 2019 calendar if you were playing i you haven't you, no you no but bob's been telling me on the car on the way here tonight what it's like he said it's absolutely destroying it's so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes next year with the players it's going to be hard for them 100 percent even if you were 20 years younger doing it again, would you still pick and choose the events you did with the calendar so packed? You'd have to do. You can't do them all. You know, you've seen players now pulling out of tournaments. You, you couldn't. It's, it's impossible. Plus, you've got a family as well. You know, you couldn't do it. Halfway through 2018, how would you assess the dart season so far? Obviously, you've taken a step back and no longer playing it. What's your assessment of what you've seen so far? Very busy again. Very, very busy. I've enjoyed what I've seen. I, I haven't done a lot of watching darts, I'll be honest with you, because I've played it for so many years. You know, I've had a break from it. Um, I do look at the results on the on the website, and that's what I've been doing. I'm a bit of a flicker, so I'll watch like five minutes, and then I'll flick over to something else, and I'll flick back see the scores, and flick back over. I'm one of them. Eighty. One.
Obviously, the match play, so many memories, but if you could pick one, your moment of the match play, what would it be? My moment of the match play is probably, and I, I don't want to well up here, by the way, uh, which I did at the time, was when Gary had won it, and he's on stage, he's having his photos. I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. And he, he, was, he was up on the stage with, with Ty and he's having his photos done. And that for me is, is what it's all about. It's not always about the, the performing and doing it when you've done it. And then you're celebrating with family and watching, watching Rachel. And no, I just thought that that was magnificent. And at the time I was in the studio and we had to cut to a VT because I, I was basically crying. I, I love things like that. Early days, PDC was more easier because if you won the World Championship, you could go in there to them for 10 years. BDO, you can win it one year and you're back the following year, but after that, you've got to qualify. And that's, it's, I think it's quite a slog to qualify to get to the World Champs in the BDO. But now it's the same in the PDC. It's like you have a party and you're happy, you're in the living room drinking and you invite another load in and you're pushed into the kitchen and then in the end you're in the garden and that's what's happened now PDC players were there they've opened the door and they've gone to their party and they're push, pushing them out because there's too many of them and then you've got to really pull your socks up then um, you, they say professional fed up here and all that I'm a professional you know, it's, you know it, you, you're, the, you're a dark player you know we like a drink but you, you go to some countries they don't drink at all these kids and these people that play darts don't have to drink to play darts. It's a sort of a culture thing, I suppose, to, in a British way. You go in a pub, and even if you're old enough to drink, you don't really like drinking. It's horrible taste. So you have a game of darts, and you get good at it, and then you get good at uh, the bitters and that, and you think, oh, this is not bad. But you don't have to drink to play darts. If you drink too much, you can't play anyway. But it's a thing that you you have to get you get you're brought up with it. It's like I don't know. You don't go in a greengrocer's to buy a loaf of bread, do you? Touching there, Michael. Yes, he is fantastic. Mm. And the way the rankings done, he can't be caught. Yeah. Is he the best player in the world right now, in your <clears throat> opinion, or has Gary overtaken him right now? Um, I don't know. I, I think um, I think you have to say it's Michael again because yes, Gary Anderson won the match play. Played superb, absolutely superb. Michael had an off day, got punished. Um, but since then, um, he's won a couple of Europeans and whatever, and well, and he's um, he's starting to try and stamp a bit of authority again. But if he lets his guard down, the likes of Anderson, Smith, uh, Peter Wright, people like that, they're going to pounce. So he knows he's got to have his wits about him. He's got to have his guard up constantly because. Them guys are there ready to strike and they don't fear him. So, you know. Nice. What is it like to work with Matt or for Matt, should I say? Um, I can't really swear on it. It's kind of hard. You can want. swear, you can swear if you want. No, I'm joking. Uh, Matt's good to work with. You know, he's, um, he, he's probably one of the hardest workers in darts there is, especially managers wise. Uh, you know, he, on, the, on his sort of evenings, he do not much work goes into it until you see how much something like Matt does. You know, getting the, the auction stuff together predominantly. Getting you know the the people organised, the stage people, the lighting, the screens, everything comes together. It's mainly you know because of Matt. You know he put so much work in that goes unseen until you actually come and see or get into it yourself. So within MDA, what's your what's your job role? What do you do for the company? I mainly uh, predominantly I drive the van and do what Matt tells me. <laughs> that's, you know, that's my role. Uh, whatever Matt needs me to do, whether it be make sure the players are okay, get bits and pieces, drive the van up and down the country, which, which we often do. You know, like last week was in Scotland, all over the place with Paul Gascoigne. This week we're here with all the players tonight, Phil Taylor. And next week we're probably somewhere else I don't even know yet. He generally moves on a Thursday, on a Thursday tells us we're going tomorrow. Oh, OK, we're off. That's about it. So you're a darts fan yourself? I am, very much a darts fan. Obviously, yeah. when your players play each other and you're sat there, that must be yeah. the ultimate nightmare for yourself. Do you actually Depends sit there and watch it? Depends if it's a final, it? I'm quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you sit there and watch it or do you take yourself backstage so you can't really see what's going on? It's never happened on TV. It's never happened on TV. There was a game this year in Coventry, not Coventry, Milton Keynes, where Dowell played James. And James was the best game he's played all year. I think he went 12-12-10 uh, to beat him 6-2 and Dowell was like, oh, but 
the guys that I deal with are pretty good. I don't get many tantrums. Me and Dale have fell out probably once in six years. Um, and no major fallouts as well. So, you know, it's hard when they play each other, but at the end of the day, someone's got to win and someone's got to lose. So. Have you ever signed anyone that you regret that you didn't wish you'd signed, that's obviously no longer with you? No, the only two that we sort of like parted company with was Dean, Win Stanley and Justin. And I won't regret any of it really, because they gave me so many good memories. Just in early doors was some great memories, and you know, beating Wes Newton at Blackpool was amazing. Uh, it was part of Wes as well, but uh, Dean, Dean, me and Dean, um, we're clash personalities, but he gave me some of the best nights of my life watching him play, so I'd never regret anything. You don't regret anything because you learn from it, so never regret anybody. It's a, it's a gamble at the end of the day, and you know, we signed Dowell when he was zero in the rankings, and you know, that journey has been unbelievable. It's, Best, 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 best time of my life, really. You're captain of your Friday night team. Yeah. Six players, whoever you want, past, present, someone that you play with at the pub that you know. What, right. what would your six man dream team be? Oh, God, Jesus. Uh, I don't know. Um, not including me. You can pick yourself if you want. No, I'm not going to pick me. <laughs> um, I think um, Phil Taylor, Michael Van Gerwen, Eric Bristow, James Wade. Adrian Lewis, Gary Hansen, and not necessarily in that order. Oh, six-man dream team. My dream team, when I first played, was the England side. So the, the, the players that I played with them was Eric, John Lowe, Bob Anderson, Big Cliff, that's four. Um, Keith Daly, I'd have Keith in. Somebody mark the board. <laughs> and I'd put Danny Spreece in as well. Sheesh. Right, so... The, the best six I can pick, or the most like. Uh, so, is that six plus me, or, or five plus me? You can me? include yourself in that. Of six course, it's you 